can you hear me? Hey, what's up, buddy? How are you? Hey, doing well. Is your name? What is it? James? Is that your? Is that your real name? No, that's my. I, dude, I my name is so difficult to pronounce that I literally have to go by my middle name for clients and cold calls. Otherwise, it's just like they think. Like one guy thought I was from India. One guy was like, "Oh, you got a good act." I'm like, you know what? We're just gonna go by my middle name. So okay, my that name's was... Amen. Yeah. So, okay, say it one more time. Amen. Amen. Okay. It's just, I guess how it's not, how it's spelled, it doesn't sound like that, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, I remember Nick, he got on the call or whatever. He's giving you a shout out. He's like, yeah, I pronounce it wrong every single time. So I'm just going to say E. So that's, that's just what, I, that's what I told him. That's what I told him to say. So that's so funny. Okay. Well, cool. Well, dude, how are things? Where, where are you at right now? Uh, I'm in Connecticut. Uh, things are good. Things are good. I, we're, landed deals left and right now so we're just starting to get um you know a little bit of steam moving forward i just hired a va she starts next week so we're just putting training material together but um yeah things are going good man it's, it's picking up i love it dude so tell us a little bit about yourself as far as um so i, I guess I'll, i won't ask you a bunch of questions let's just start with one how long have you been or like i guess not been how long have you known about rank and rent or digital landlord uh, i think i i learned about it i heard nick on a podcast um the opportunity podcast uh i think maybe it was in july or june and i was just kind of thinking like i needed to do something you know I'm, i was living in san francisco at the time working down there and i was just you know just doing sales i was like selling uniforms and like linen pretty like unfulfilling job it was like mm -hmm. decent money I was like, I need to do something else, you know, because I don't want to wake up at 40 and be like, I'm still doing this and I'm still working for someone else. So I heard about rank and rent and I was like, well, that doesn't sound too, too hard. And it doesn't sound like there's too much of a technical barrier there. It's like, yeah. well, I can do sales. So uh, I started looking, I found uh, Nick's content and got into it. And I was like, well, let's just give it a shot. And then um, people, yeah, people in the Discord group are really, really helpful. Um, Got a few deals there, and then that's when I decided to hop on the call with Nick about the paid program. And um, yeah, since I've done that, I mean, it was it was like a slingshot as far as just keeping organized and then also being sure of the decisions you're making before you're going in. So that was always my biggest issue was like, all right, I think this is right. I think I think this is a good area. I, I you know, it, but but it was never. It was never like, okay, I am positive and I feel good about this going in. So mm -hmm. that's what helped me big time. That's awesome. So how long was it from the time that you have, you knew about it to the point where you're landing deals? Like when did you land your first deal? It was like within the first month I landed a deal. Um, and then, I mean, I, the town, that's where I moved back home to, to, for where I grew up with, to partner with, um, with an old buddy of mine. And that's where, that's where I'm at right now his desk is right there mm. but um we we live in a town too with like a ton of contractors like everyone's a contractor you know everyone's an electrician everyone's a painter everyone you know is doing something in that field so and it's much cheaper than san francisco so i mean we just reached out to all of our friends that like we're like hey we just found this new way that we can you know help you grow your business and most of them it's like yeah prove it works to me and then so we got two right off the bat just from you know, just our own personal connections, which I always highly recommend to people in the beginning. It's like, you know, everyone knows someone that, that is a contractor in like the fields that we're trying to enter. It's like, reach out to them and like build your skills with them. Someone that's a little bit more reasonable. Mm -hmm. And then um, maybe two months later, then we got our first um, like, you know, reach out, like did the whole process client um, in uh, New York. <clears throat> and then, um, yeah, then that was when we signed up. And then since there, I mean, we got two, I got two in under four days, um, what, like maybe a week ago. And then we've got, I mean, we've got, what's it called? We got three, three other local guys, like ready to sign up. We just kind of have to prove it to them. And then one other guy that we did the, uh, the whole process for that wow. hopefully we'll do a closing call with this weekend. That's awesome. So what, uh, 
you mentioned earlier you said okay so my hardest thing for for you what 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 what, i guess what was the hardest part for you was it the finding the city was that the biggest thing for you in in the beginning yeah kind of finding the city and then also just like analyzing the level of competition on on google um because i mean i had so i had no like website no seo training nothing i i didn't i really knew nothing i just knew that i could sell stuff yeah um so when you're like, you know, now it's like it's second nature just because like I've done the training and I've looked at it. I can look at a, at a SERP result and be like, this is perfect or this is not good. Yeah. In the beginning, I made a ton of mistakes. I wasted a ton of money, like trying to go into areas. And it's like, oh, I went in, but I didn't find anyone that was paying for ads. So like I call a bunch of businesses and they tell me to screw off. And it's like, OK, well, why didn't that work? But now, like I, I, I have my criteria set of like this i know this is going to work like i will find someone i will get leads so because it's like you don't know if you're running ads you don't know how much money you're going to burn on the spot if you if you know you can't find anyone to sell it to one and two if the lead, if the volume even is just gonna is gonna come in so that was huge for me it's just like the confidence to be like i know this is going to work we did we did everything correctly so mm -hmm. that's what um what the course really valued um uh, provided value to me i guess yeah no that's awesome so what was the niche that you went into for your first deal uh like a low like well i guess we could say the first one was fencing for fencing. uh for the one that we did like the whole process and did outreach we've got a couple other ones but it's like they're all kind of weird deal structures so i don't really count them and they're, they're friends so it's like some of them are a little bit commission yeah um but we've got an electrician a tree service guy uh a carpet cleaner and a couple others that we're about to sell as That's well but the first yeah. one fencing. how much was the fencing how much did you charge him uh, i got a 2k 2k so how how was that like initially like when you first do your first deal was this were you by yourself like when you did this whole like the first time with this fencing guy or did you have someone doing the prospecting and then you sold like how did you kind of split that up so yeah, it was just me and my partner, but he was on the East Coast and I was still in California at the time. So I just kind of worked, I just kind of went through it all on my own, found some people. Um, I didn't do anything right. You know, the guy was just, I, I didn't do anything right. Like the way the, the, even the sales process, which I feel is my most strongest thing. I still kind of did everything kind of out of order. I followed it to like the best of my ability, but it just came to basically it's, it's the same thing in Nick said. It's basically a give me. It's like the, the guy was looking to grow. It was just the right time. And I mean, and he was still, it still was not a smooth sale by any means. Um, but the area that we chose, like I'm like, and you know, that area that we chose and we entered is actually pretty competitive. Like I didn't do the DD right, and it's gonna take me a little bit more time and money to rank there. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I don't even know if necessarily I'm going to rank it because it's like I could just take the, you know, the the upside of, of the ad spend and just leave it and not have to deal with the headache of probably, you know, nine months to a year of, of SEO and constant updating. But, you know, but like the next deal we got, like I'm already on page two of this guy we just got last week because yeah. it was so damn weak. So even though I'm not making as much because I was a $1,200 deal, I'm going to make more off that because I'm not having to spend crazy money on ads. Yeah, that's awesome. So what was, would you say was overthinking a big thing for you or was it more just not knowing the training as well and not knowing the right city? Yeah, it was just like overanalyzing for sure. Just like going over it and like not being sure for myself um, if it was a good if it was a good, you know, city to enter. Uh, and then, you know, I probably overlooked a few that I've already forgot that probably were great. Yeah. So, I mean, once, I mean, once you do the training too, it's like, you know, it's pretty cut and dry. Like, you know, you know, like, and I, so I was basically just kind of going off and then off on um, like using my own metrics or like piecing together what I could find from either what Nick said on his free videos or like, you know, I bought another rank and rent course that was like 20 bucks on U Udemy, which was just like, recommended all the wrong tools like the shit didn't work like it, it, it so i didn't really have like the the play-by-play -play to to like go into the right places because i definitely wasted a couple grand on fucking sites and just like my time and, and on tools and shit that i didn't really need but that's like once you know uh i mean that that was just huge for me because 
I tend to overanalyze stuff and, and tinker a little bit too much. So now it's like, once I know that this is a good, good decision, good area, it just changes everything as far as my confidence when I'm entering, you know, it's all about just, I can just really focus on sales, which is what I want to do in the long run. Yeah, no, I love that. And I want to bring up one point. I think that's very important that you like for whoever's watching that you don't use eight different tools, like pick a tool and, and go with it. Like so many times I think people will look at Mangles, SEMrush, Ahrefs, like all these different tools and they're all slightly different. And so they're like, well, this is like 20, but then this was 10. So like, which one do I believe? Right. It's like, it doesn't matter. Like Nick always, always like, dude, they're, they're all wrong. Like, but just kind of like use the base point, whatever to know what, how many lead or how many leads they're actually getting. So just don't, don't get in the habit of checking all three because you get in your head so much. Like if it looks good and you've used the tool, you know, you've, you watch the training, whatever, just go with it. Like stop overthinking it. Yeah, so big time. That's good. Um, so with the Zoom call, how was that? I mean, 2K for, for this deal, this tree service guy, like how was that? How did that go over? Was it was it like a an easy sell? Was he what objections was he? Did he have any objections? Yeah, I mean, well, he was interested to take the free ones, but then it was like it was hard to get him on a Zoom call. And he kept I kept thinking, like, oh, I'll just give him another free one. I'll give him another free one. Yeah. And uh, that will, you know, make it better. But then I kind of realized it's like, OK, unless I put my foot down and I do like a strong pullback, like I'm going to lose this guy. Yeah. And then um, I finally got him on the call and I cried for information. And I mean, like it, the guy was a perfect fit, too. He's like a whole fail, wholesaler in an area where I was getting like 580 volume. So like I got 14 leads in three days. So like I could give them away like pretty, pretty liberally in the beginning beginning but like once he started telling me he closed it i had to be like dude if if you know you gotta shit or get off the pot bro like i've already made you like you know sixteen thousand dollars off these jobs he's a wholesaler so it's like he's like i guarantee the low price so i just put that on the ad guaranteed low price fencing and it's like the phone rings off the hook because yeah. there was like 30 fencing companies in the city so but um eventually yeah we came to an agreement we settled on 2k it's definitely worth more than that but um, ranking, it's going to be difficult because I didn't do the DD right. And I got a little, you know, I just saw the big, uh, the big number. <clears throat> yeah. Well, and I think your first deal, you can't really over, uh, I think your first deal is basically like, just get the first deal. I mean, at, at the end of the day, like if you don't, if you have to bag the site, like I've, I've done that, like there, there's some sites that I've, I've like ran ads to and I've sold it and I had a, a business owner for three or four months and then it's just not a good area. I, I look more into my DD and everything's just not that good. So I've just bagged it and moved on, but it gives you that confidence to like get another deal, you know? Oh, so like sure. whatever you got to do to get that first deal, like that's the biggest thing. Like don't, don't like focus so much on perfectionism. Cause I, I mean, it will come like Nick told me he's like, and he's said this on multiple calls where he's like, I went through in my own business and I literally got through, like got rid of like a hundred websites. Like, I, I can't imagine how many hours and time he spent on that. But at the same time, like, it's going to save him so much money and time down the road, finding those those areas that are just going to be providing that money and it's easy to rank. Yeah. So it, it just, it's so important. So what, what was the one thing that you would tell yourself, like beginning this, like what's one word of advice you'd give yourself, like just starting, or maybe just someone that's watching this call, like what would you say if they were just starting out? Uh, I would say definitely spend the time to learn, learn, because like the great thing about this course, I would say, is that all of these skills, they transfer to other businesses and other other sectors of the internet that you can make money like you learn how to sell which nick is fantastic at he's a great salesman his process is great and you learn how to rank something on there you will have lifetime skills to make sure that you never have to work for someone ever again mm -hmm. so that that's what i would say if people are hesitant to buy this course it's like it's not just for rank and rent like learning to sell in a process that's broken down for you like it is in this course is I mean, it's paramount to anything. All of the most successful people in the world, you know, Mark Cuban always says, he's like, he's like, my number one skill is that I could always sell. So it's like, once you can sell and you know a process, you can transfer that to anything. And um, the, the one thing Nick told me, because I was hesitant in the first guys, I didn't, I didn't want to do this because I'd already gotten a couple deals. And I was like, 
you know, I think I could figure this out. And, um, you know, I, and I got on the closing call and I'm sitting there like, all right, bro, well, like, let's, let's see, what do you got? Like, and the one thing that he said that resonated with me is that, you know, if you feel like you're in a position somewhere to mind is it's going to save you a ton of time. It's like, yeah, you probably could figure it out. And like, I might've figured it out in six months. It could have taken me a year to get really comfortable, but you know, because I made the investment into the course and I did that, all of the deals that I could have made over that time, if I was just doing things the right way, will eclipse the cost of the course in the yeah. long run. So that's what I would just say. If you're, if you're in a position similar to mine, I mean, you know, I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to move in with a business partner. But like I, as soon as I did this, I, cl I quit my job. I packed the car, moved my girlfriend and my dog, drove all the way across the country. And I, I had the opportunity to move in with, with my business partner, but mm -hmm. it's the best thing I ever did. Like I'm, I'm probably never going to have to work for anyone ever again. Yeah. And I'm excited every day I wake up. I'm like, let's, let's go, baby. I'm about to make some money today. Yeah. So you guys can do that too. So you I just got to stick, stick to the process, stick to the process. That's so true. Well, and I think we don't, we sometimes when we first start out, we don't really know how valuable your time is. Okay. I got to turn this light on because I'm so dark. Hold on. This is crazy. All right. It's all good. Got this little light here. Um, but the, you just don't realize like how valuable your time is. I remember like just thinking like, oh, this, this is a really good use of my time. But then you're like, well, then I can't focus on this task that's actually going to be making me money. So you start to like prioritize like what's most important. And you'll notice that a lot of times people waste your time. Like there's so many business owners that you'll talk to and they're, they say they're interested and they're, they're really not like, there's so many things that happen that you're like, dude, I'm just wasting my time and I need to move on. And so I think when you for, truly realize like, the difference between like your time and then like you how much time it's going to spend you to actually look at the course like you literally like you said you're going to pay for itself like it's literally going to pay for itself it's just a matter of time right yeah, yeah. I mean, it, so, it, you will it will take time too especially if you know you're looking because obviously you're going to fish for more information so now instead of following you know just nick and one in one course of like the right way to do it you're piecing together information from a bunch of other people like people that do like there's more content on traditional rank and rent rather than what we do here. Um, so you could get those two things convoluted and now you're wasting your time building out this crazy website and then you're still running ads to like, you can, you can confuse things, but um, yeah, it's like and wasting your time with other with business owners. It's like, once you get confident, like in the beginning, I, I found that one guy and I was like, I will do whatever I can to get this guy to close this deal. Yeah. When in reality, I probably this, you know, the second he, the, the second call he missed, I should have been like, all right, bro, you're, we're done. I'm finding someone else. Yeah. So, and it's like, once you get that confidence, you know, you can, you, you don't have to hold on to that one person. That's like, yeah, sure. I'll take a few free leads. It's true. Well, and, and to be honest, you have to be, um, you have to be kind of like cocky, not cocky, but like, you have to have a little bit of like, I don't need you mentality because I, I literally, deal started to come so much faster when I literally had the mindset of like, if this call doesn't work, who cares? Like if this business owner is not the right fit, who cares? But when I, when I fit, when I started like struggling and I started to like get in the slump was when I was like, like, I'm going to make sure I sell this. Like no matter what I do, it's going to go through. And Nick says this all the time. He said, when he was knocking doors, he was like, every door I knocked on, I am going to sell. But he th then later found out that's not the case. It's like, it, it's who you're knocking. Who, who who are you calling? Who are you trying to prospect? That's who you're going to sell. So when, when he said that, I was like, oh, this starts to make sense. And there's going to be so many people that you're going to virtually call them or knock on their door or whatever, and they are going to say no. And, and you kind of have to just accept that because it was kind of hard at first because I was like, well, I'm just not a good salesman. Like, why am I not selling this guy? But most of the time, if you don't sell them, like, there's a reason why, right? Maybe you get a bad feeling or maybe they're just, they don't have the money, but don't try to qualify someone that doesn't, that's not necessarily ready for what you're doing. Cause it's gonna, I've had, I've landed deals that I've like, kind of like finagled. They were kind of like dirty deals where I knew they kind of weren't ready, but like, I was like, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. They could pay the first week. They were ready. I was like, okay, I could be optimistic. But at the back of my mind, I was like, they're most likely not the right fit right? Like you kind of just know, 
with business owners. And the more you, the more deals you get, the more you're like, okay, this is what I'm looking for. This is how I'm going to go about it. But until then you have to have confidence because if you don't have confidence in what you're doing and just whatever people can smell it. Like I literally, I went back and watched my previous call and I was like, how did I even land this call? Like I literally was so all over the place. I was hesitant. I was timid. And and now it's like, I just, if, if I don't land it and, and they're not the right fit, I just say, yeah, it's just not a good fit. Sorry about it. And then just move on. So just, yeah. just be confident in the process and don't, don't worry about not getting your deal. You will get deals. It's just a matter of time and, and just go with it. Right. And like, also it's like on the other side of that coin, it's like when you need to be confident and know exactly what you have is like, like the guy actually just called me right now is the, the, the other client that I got last week. I mean, I called this guy, he was super receptive, very professional. And then when I hopped on the zoom call, he, he, cut, he cuts me off and he goes, we're actually expanding into nine locations over the next five years. I'm very interested. How does this work? And um, he's like, I can't do it now. So we worked out, you know, we, I was flexible with him, but it's like, you know, if that works out and I get to rank, you know, and, and build out nine different sites for this guy, uh, I mean, that's obviously, that's huge. So it's like, there's also on the other side of the, of the, of the, uh, the bad fit business owner is there are people out there that are looking to grow and you just have to find them. Mm -hmm. And, and once you do like that can potentially become so much more profitable. So it's like, don't think that all these business owners are going to be like, you know, what is this? Like, but like, you know, super, you know, backed up. Cause if you demonstrate value, I mean, they're going to, you know, it's, it's valuable. What you have, you need to know what you have. So, I mean, I always tell on all my cold calls, I say, I will give you leads until I make you money. And then we have to sit down and talk. I'm going to put money in your pocket first. And they're always, they're all like, huh, what? Like, yeah. it's not pay per lead. It's not like, and that, that line for me, especially, which I mean, I encourage you guys to use. I mean, that is the most, uh, that that's where things turned around and they were like, okay, like once you say that, like who can say no, who can say yeah. no to that? Right? You're going to put money in my pocket for free. All I have to do is hop on a call for you. Hell yeah. I'm doing that. I know. Well, and, and I, and I think that's awesome. And I love that you're, you're learning these different, I mean, you said you've done sales, but like, I think you start to say certain things because you've talked to enough people. You're like, okay, I can say this and this is actually true. And, and you know what I'm saying? Like you kind of have to take your personality and you have to kind of implement this into what you're saying, because maybe you're, you're just a timid person. Maybe you're just like, you're just like, I cannot say that. And I cannot be that bold, but, but still like get your point across, be simple, but like, you have to kind of adjust it to like what you're saying. And so I, I love that line. I, that I might have to use that. That's awesome. It's worked, it's worked super well. And, and because it's just, you just, I mean, it's like, if, if you guys are familiar with Hermosi, you know, he always says in his book, it's like, make someone an offer that they feel stupid saying no. So it's like, you can tailor that and like, whatever you have to offer. I mm. mean, you know, and you might have to give a few more leads, you know, and, and that's okay. As long as you're getting them to the point where they're starting to realize your value, then you can slowly start to take it away. Mm. And it's like, once you put it in their pocket, you know, I mean, like I use the commission, th the commission thing Nick talked about too on that deal as well. And, um, and now I've kind of opened the door for the jobs that he really wanted, which are these big farm agricultural jobs, which I happen to land one of them. And now I've worked out a commission on that where he's going to spend, he's going to pay for ads. And then I'm going to take a commission on those big jobs while he's still doing residential. So, I mean, I just told him he didn't want to like for all these people that don't say, they say they like, they only want a certain kind of job, you know, for like in concrete, they only want the parking lots. They only want these other things. I mean, what I always tell, what I told this guy and what I'm going to use moving forward is I say, by you taking these residential jobs and these small jobs, you are paying yourself for the marketing, paying yourself to market to the clients that you want by building your reputation. And once they, that, that sinks into their head, they're like, oh, that's right. Cause like how many jobs you've gotten from referrals from doing something else? Um, so it's sure. just kind of a way to spin it and, and you, you just need to get creative uh, and the more you encounter and the more calls that you take and the more people you speak to and the more clients you get, the more you're adding to your arsenal too, um, as far as for your sales process. So true. 
No, that's awesome. Well, it, you, the momentum is crazy. I can already feel it. like you, you're literally you're you're literally taking off. And I, I, pro, I guarantee it's like you just get a little taste of like that first deal, man. And you just you take off and it's like, OK, this makes sense. Like, let's just do it faster, better and more efficient. So that's so exactly. awesome. Man. So yeah. what's the what's the goal for the next six months? Like, where do you see yourself in six months? Uh, we're trying to get to 30K, 30K in six months. Um, right now, I'm really focusing on getting a team together because I'm hitting the point where it's like I'm not able to really do the back end side of, the, of things of like SEO, creating the sites. So we're starting to hire people and I just want to build, build a really strong team, get them all trained up and then start to be able to de- learn you know, how to delegate um, to make sure that everything's running smoothly. Um, cause it, that's the final phase of this game is, you know, there's like, there's kind of the three horsemen of success in online world. It's <clears throat> marketing, which is the weakest sales. And then at the top, it's delegation. You know, everyone that grows a big business, they don't do it on their own. They do it because they know how to tell other people how to do their job and put, keep the pieces together, keep the, the train on the tracks. So mm-hmm. that's what we're focusing on is just getting that team and getting them trained up so we can each focus on what we're good. I love it. So how, how do you split that up as far as like, what are you making right now? Like today, how much are you bringing in and like, how much do you need to get to in those six months? Um, we're closing in. If we close this guy tomorrow, we'll be close to 10 K. Um, but if how we get to 30 K is we're just, we've really automated a lot of the process too, with AI and, and some other methods and tools to, to expedite the whole process of DD. Um, but right now it's just having the areas to go into to be able to launch one pagers and manage the the campaigns um so that's again it's just, it's just finding the right area it really is the most important piece of the puzzle um and then from there we're probably going to hire someone to actually do the on page and build out and backlinks um and then once they get busy then we'll, we'll get someone else but i think uh, we're going to try to get rid of everything except for ad spend and for um sales for now because I love sales. sales. Sales is great. You know, that's where the money's made. And, that's awesome. But uh, all the back end stuff, it's like, I could find some, I could hire someone to do this. No problem. You just got to know how to train up. That's the thing. That's awesome, dude. I love it. Well, it sounds like you're going to, you're going to get things figured out. So everybody be following uh, E because he's about to take off here. So if you guys have questions, hit him up. Like I said, like, don't be hesitant to like, like you watch these guys, but like really like take advantage of this because there's not very often do you get to have a group that that does this and you can reach out to people and get advice. So that's awesome. Um, yeah, feel, free, feel, feel free to reach out to me. I don't mind. I mean, you'll see, I'm, I'm constantly hounding people in the group and posting all the time because it's like, if you pay for this, you know, you want to, there's tons of smart people in there that are all good at one thing. So it's like, not only are you getting the training, but you're also getting access to like people that have done what you're trying to do. So it's like, use it, use it. So I don't mind, reach out to me. I'll give anyone a hand. You need advice on, on whatever sales, let me know. So true. No, that's awesome. Well, definitely do that. So let me just answer a few questions and then we'll, we'll hop off. I know we, everybody's got stuff to do. So Jason said, how many ad campaigns would you suggest running with low budget? If I can just land one client, it pays for the rest. Right. So if you don't uh, answer, how many, how many campaigns did, let's just talk about your first deal. Like how many did you run with your first deal? Uh, I had three that fell through before I got my first deal and I wasn't really focused. I was running about two at a time in the beginning. Um, yeah, it really just comes back to just making sure you're in the right area and then, you know, you know, focus on quality over quantity, I would say, because that ad spend, it does get expensive. Uh, and then, you know, maybe it's something that looks good, but this cost per click is a little bit higher. Um, you know, maybe don't go for that one. Maybe just, just really try to find the right area. And I would, I would keep it to two until you get a little bit more proficient. I would agree. I think smaller is better in the beginning. One is hard because if that area is not good, then you have to go back and find another one. So I always like to have at least like two, just kind of like ready to go. Even if you can only afford one, run the one. And then if nothing, start the other one, but you don't realize it, but there it's a lot of time. It takes a lot of time to find the city, get the ads going, get the landing page, like get the, the upfront, the leg work done first and then get going. But I believe there's a certain point where doing it all yourself is hard because 
you're going to slack at some point, whether it's the sales process, whether it's your due diligence, like you're going to get so flustered because there's so much that needs to get done and you can only do one thing at, at one time. So start out small and then just like E here, hire in your guys, get, get your VAs and then, and then scale that way. But I would definitely, definitely recommend smaller is better. Right. Yeah. And it's like, also remember, I mean, I've grown so fast, but I'm also working, I've got double the manpower. I have a partner that works full time at this too. So it's like, if you're working on your own, don't expect to get to that same, you know, level unless you're a superstar, but like I have help, you know? So, yeah. So don't, yeah, don't, don't get frustrated. Just take your time. <laughs> so true. Okay. And then uh, Herman said, of course, imperfect action is the best action, but when it comes to due diligence, isn't it best to get at least that part near perfect so you know the place you're going into is guaranteed win, even with a crappy site? Yes, I mean, you. that is the most important part. Like the city is the most imp like Im important, but at the same time, if you're spending weeks and weeks and you have cities that are like dang near the same, like pick a city, use your intuition, say, is, is this a warmer place? What niche am I doing? And go into it. But there's so many times where, you'll take your time and you have a city on the back burner. It's like sitting on your desk written down, you're ready to go. And you just sits there and you're so nervous to like make that action that someone else takes it and you go look at it. And sure enough, you done missed your, your opportunity in your window to, to put post those ads up. So just don't do it for too long, but yes, yeah, spend the most time on the city. So the rest of it doesn't matter. I agree. Um, Nick said, or said, Nick also mentioned that when growing a business and training people, it's best to document everything. Are you teaching your VAs through your own videos or Nick stuff? Uh, so what I did is I just made a notion account and I've documented the whole process written out. And then what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to record loom videos, um, while I'm doing training for them. So I'll have records of the questions this VA asked for in the future when I, if I have to train another person. So um, I might provide them with a few of, of Nick's videos, but um, I feel like I'm pretty confident into the way um, the way to teach this. And also we kind of modify things like everyone does things a little bit differently too. Um, so yeah, but I'm just gonna, I'm definitely gonna record all of them for future reference. Um, and then that way, you know, next time, next VA, I don't have to do as much. Yeah, smart. So, and then they ask, where do you, where are you getting your VA? It says, yeah, where do you go for your outsource work, VAs, SEO, et cetera? Uh, online jobs at PH. They're, they're the best that I've seen. Um, yeah, you just post a job there, post your, I would say, I recommend going with salary for all these people. Uh, I'd say if you're, hiring, if you're hiring a specialist, I would say it's 500 and up per month. If it's a trained position, I'd say you could probably find someone between the three to $400 range. Um, I mean, they're really hungry, hardworking people from what I've heard. I mean, this is my first one, so I can't give, um, a more detailed feedback, but, um, that's what most people use. That, that's what I would say. Cool. I love it. No, that's awesome. Well, I really, honestly, it's good talking to you because I feel like every person I get on here, it motivates me to not only get going, but hopefully everyone in this group and, and, some people are at different stages like you, you're outsourcing. Some people, they're doing it all on their own. And so it's good to see all these different perspectives. But the one thing we all have in common is we're landing deals. And that's the most important thing. So thanks for all uh, th thanks for all the questions that I've been uh, been asking you. And thanks for being so willing. Okay, to other things that you'd like to give or any little word of advice that you'd like to to end with? Yeah, just just keep at it. Don't If, you, if something doesn't go the way that you, you thought it would be and you're getting frustrated, just uh just keep at it because there is a light at the end of the tunnel <clears throat> all it takes is two or three deals usually to replace your income um and then from there you get some confidence and then it starts to steamroll i mean that's where i'm at the snowball is now gaining in size rolling down the hill and you know it's a, it's a great feeling so just keep at it keep at it i love it guys well, thanks for everybody being on. We will be going live next week again. So get ready for our uh, our next one. Hope you guys like that little teaser pick. Don't look at it too long. You know, it might burn your eyes. But anyways, until we meet again, E, we'll see you soon. All right.